And today we're going to have a chat with a friend of mine who's a popular radio announcer and quite often we tend to bond emotionally with those we hear on radio but today we get the chance to see the face of the one who's behind the scenes of it all Gaynell Marshall. Gaynell, such a pleasure to be here with you today. How's it going? It's great. Let me look where we are, right? And uh, now one of the things I wanted to do was to get to know you. So often we hear your voice, and I love it by the way, and it's so, uh, you can distinguish it anywhere. But Gaynell, who are you? How did you get here? What happened? How, how, how did you come to Barbados? Uh, well, the obvious answer would be a plane, <laughs> but um, uh, my parents are Bajan. So even though I was born in Toronto, when they retired, uh, we moved to Barbados. So I was in my teens, I was about 14 at the time. So that's, that's pretty much the long and short of how I got here. <laughs> and how did you find the whole transition to Barbados? Did you feel isolated? You left all your friends behind, how was it? Um, actually, I thought it was more difficult than it probably should have been. Um, I think it's because most of the time you know a place for how your parents represent it. And if they're away from a place long enough, it becomes very utopic. Um, but for a very monochromatic place, I still found that I was somehow always on the outside, always on the periphery, um, very alien. Now, you would have gone from Harrison College on to Community College. What did you end up studying there? Um, a lot of things. <laughs> I, I, I started doing English Lit, Economics and Accounting, the most weird combination I can think of. But I think during my last year, I said, you know what, I'm, I'm being pulled more towards uh, mass communication, uh, specifically journalism or television production, which was initially my aim. So how do you end up then from uh, wanting to study television production and then fall into radio? By accident. Um, our tutor at the time, who's now Dr. Susan Harewood, fantastic, fantastic woman. And um, she said at the time, oh, they're looking for radio talent, on-air talent, at what was then Rediffusion. Mm -hmm. And I said, well, good luck to all of them. <laughs> because I want to do television production. She said, but you should give it a try. I'm like, I'm not talking to anybody. She said, just go do the audition. I said, fine, because I expected to do the audition, not really get the call back, how Hollywood was that, but not really get the call back, <laughs> and, and then just move on with, with plan A, which was really television production. Yeah, plan A did not work out. <laughs> they didn't call you back? Oh, I didn't get that call back. So on to plan B, Rediffusion called me back and said, well, well, we'd like to invite you to start training. I said, I said okay. And then when I got into it, I'm like, okay. Okay, I'm not sure I can do this now. I, and, and you just had a lot of good people around you, especially back then, who were just like, don't worry about it. You're swimming, girl, you're swimming. I'm like, I'm taking in a lot of water here. <laughs> But no, no, don't worry, girl, you're swimming. So I said, okay, but you know what? Eventually, you just, you just find your rhythm and you go. Now, that's what I want to know. How did you then come to get your own radio gig? How did it start? Yeah, we are the company that will throw you in. We'll watch you swim, but you, you gotta swim. Um, actually, it was quite accidental. Uh, somebody didn't turn up for a show. Lesson to everybody. Um, somebody didn't turn up for a show one day, and my then supervisor, the late Carl Scott, bless him, and he said, do you know how to use that computer in there? I lied, yes. <laughs> Can you use the board? I lied again, sure. <laughs> and he threw me on. So by the end of the shift and nothing terrible had happened, then he said, well, go upstairs, talk to HR because we need to get some paperwork organized because he was confident, I was competent enough to start something. And then I actually started on Voice of Barbados, what was in 790 on the AM band in the midday. That, that was my first show. This episode is brought to you by Barbados Events, Design Central Studio, Barbados Real Estate, and Empire Media Limited. That's a telephone line. I was going to put up a non-existent line as an attack, 
Hey, thanks for listening to Love FM 104.1 because no one's on the line, so I can be as happy as I want to be. Fantastic. And top of the morning, too. It's afternoon, of course. It's afternoon. Absolutely. Thanks for calling. All right, great stuff now. We're going to punch that non existent caller out and continue with the hit music. It's Chris Brown, Fine China. Don't let him around it because you never know what he's going to do with it. Can you say now that you've definitely found your passion? You think that you've got it? I, you, you never think that you've got it for some reason, but you think that people won't throw you away. <laughs> They'll be fine today with you, but you learn something new every time because, I mean, we went from basically a culture where we were using a lot of turntables, CDs, cassette rep recorders, uh, DAP machines. Now we are all about the computers, all about, you know, virtual DJ and social media which is a completely different thing, you know? So basically radio has had to reinvent itself at least three times since I've been there. So it's like having three different jobs in the same studio. Fantastic. Now, family. Family always comes into play when you're, you know, into what you think is you, what defines you. What, what have they thought about where you are? Well, my mom, of course, thinks it's great because I think if anyone should have been on the radio, it should have been her. Okay. Because we already sound alike, one. And two, she was the one who always used to volunteer. Oh, I'll read the lesson at church. Oh, I'll read the, I'm not reading anything for anybody to hear. That was my mom. So I personally think I may have stole her legacy. Sorry. Um, but my dad, he was just kind of like, um, well, go ahead, train, see, see what happens. Because he was always confidently reserved, naturally. And he probably gave me the best advice. One day he's passing me in the kitchen. He said, by the way, you talk too fast. And moved out. And I... I remember that. <laughs> <laughs> now, now, the thing is, I am sure you've come across a number of artists, celebrities, characters. What are your most memorable moments? Uh, funny enough, I got a chance to relive this moment only a couple weeks ago because he was back in Barbados again. Hey! And I can easily say one of my favorite interviews was Neo. He's also really? one of my favorite artists. Okay, can you tell us a little bit about that? He, he was just the coolest. He's very humorous, he's very witty, you know, and, and he just sits down and he wants to know about as much about you as you want to know about him. Uh, so the interview was great and the concert was great, et cetera, et cetera. But at that time, which was about five years ago, what struck me about him is that he took his responsibility to his um, partners so seriously that he was supposed to have a, an interview at one of our stations for four o'clock. And his entourage, you know, they're laying around the pool, they're drinking it up, you know, they can wait. He's like, I'm not doing this. He left the hotel, walked down the hill, caught a minibus Serious? and got to Starcom on wow. time. And I was like, where are your people? He said, I don't know, but they better get here. <laughs> like he could have taken a taxi, called a limo, whatever, took the bus. He said, because I saw it the last time I was here, I saw them get off across the street. So I did that. I wow. said, dude, you forever have my respect. And I reminded him about that a couple weeks ago. He's like, you remember that? I'm like, how do you forget that? Wow. <laughs> yeah. And what about Barbadian artists? Any ever stood out to you? Um, I love most of my Barbadian artists. I was a square one junkie for many, many years. I'm, st I'm still not cured, which is good. Um, and of course, I'm extremely proud of, of where many of ours have gone. The Nexuses have come along mm -hmm. and the Wesu Wallaces have come along and it's been great stuff. And I don't think enough can be said for how proud I am of how Rihanna has managed to weather the tide with the sharks in the water, the vultures above the waiting for her. And she's like, you're gonna have to wait. And I love that about her. And she's another one of these down-to-earth chicks. You know, she's always, like, she might be right behind us for all we know. Because that, that's just how she rolls. Now, Gaynelle, hobbies, pastimes, when you're off the radio, what do you do? You look like a girl that takes care of herself, spa treatment, shopping. I could be wrong. You tell me. What do you do? Actually, I don't get to the spa very often at all. Actually, one of my favorite things to do is literally to be home and changing my nail color all the time. It's relaxing. I love it. I just sit down. I do it myself. Um, but I like, I love the beach. Um, I, I could do a catamaran every week without nice. fail. Me and the turtles, we're, we're here. Nice. Um, but I like adventurous things as well. So if I can get out, sometimes you have to get out of the island to do that. Mm -hmm. For instance, um, two years ago, some friends and I, we took a cruise. One of the cruise stops was in Belize. So we literally climbed the Mayan ruins. These things are not short. They're very, <laughs> very high. For some short people, that have them very high ruins. <laughs> so, I, I, but I meant I had to get to the top, you know. And on my 30th birthday, I went to Paris. Um, uh, my, one of my many stops and you know my cousin came halfway up the Eiffel Tower with me I said what are you doing she says I'm done I'm not going further I said I did not come all the way to France to go halfway oh, up the <laughs> up the Eiffel Tower we're going to the top and I took all of my panoramic 
photos from the top of the city. I love stuff like that. I love to see landmarks and monuments and know that I was there. Now, where does Gaynell see herself in the next 5, 10, 20 years? Um, Career-wise, I would actually like to branch into other things that I am also qualified or certified to do. Um, but they involve so many things. I don't know, you, you start to sound like that teenager that can't make up her mind, I'm there again. You know, it's like I would I definitely love my own web series, much like this. Um, and I've been in the process of developing that as well. So look out, it might happen anytime soon. Um, just to, do, to, to be able to do different things that sometimes the constraints of a broadcast license kind of hinders you in from doing certain things, you know, so you don't want to get anybody sued, but uh, you still want to explore certain areas. Gaynell, absolute pleasure talking to you. Now I feel as if I know so much more. So that when I hear the voice on the radio, I can envision all the personality that goes behind it. So thank you. Thank you so much for having me. And it's great being on the couch. Now I can say I was there. And when I watch it, love to watch the show. Good. And you know what? We've had such a good time here. I, I need to sip this. So why don't we grab a little stroll along the boardwalk? You see that? Yeah. Let's